We are gonna do elbow joint mobs now. So keeping in mind again, your patient can be supine or they can be sitting, but with these techniques, it seems to be just easier to have them supine because the patient can also relax a little bit better, which is really the goal of your treatment. So with elbow joint mobs, we're going to do a radial glide, anterior, posterior, and again, you always wanna to check to make sure that you know what your joint mobilization is helping as far as motion goes. So going through my checklist, my patient is comfortable here. I could put a pillow here if it, it's more comfortable for the patient as well. I'm in a good position to do my joint mobilization. I know I'm gonna stabilize proximal to the joint and put my mobilizing hand distal to the joint. Now, the tricky part with the elbow joint mobs for our radial glides is we need to find the radial head. The easiest way to locate that is you can find your olecranon and then go maybe a centimeter and a half uh, anteriorly and you'll find the little round head of the radius. If you supinate and pronate, that radial head should roll underneath your thumb, that way you know you're on it. So my thumb is on my radial head to mobilize. My fingers are going to go through that antecubital space here and try to grasp some of that radius through this whole area. So I have a whole grasp of the radius. I'm gonna put my stabilizing hand on the humerus, distal to the joint. Now with this angle here, my direction of force actually has to go up towards his opposite shoulder. So I'm going to drop my elbow here and aim towards his opposite shoulder to do my anterior glide. So anterior glide is going to be going towards that opposite shoulder. I can do any of the grades of oscillation. My posterior glide, my hands don't change position, so they're the same, but now I'm going to pull into a posterior direction more towards me. Same stabilizing distal to the joint, or proximal to the joint. Mobilizing hands distal to the joint, drop my direction of force here, but I'm going to pull into a posterior direction. So a posterior glide would be good for elbow extension. An anterior glide would be good for elbow flexion. I can also do a distraction of the ulna. So the ulna is what's actually articulating the most at the elbow, so to improve all motions here, a distraction of the ulna would be very beneficial. Uh, the radius, because it doesn't articulate as well, we don't really need to do a distraction there. So with the ulnar distraction, I need to get into a good position. So I'm actually gonna raise the table up as much as I can. So with this, I'm going to try to get my fingers right in that antecubital space. So I theoretically can hold the ulna with my right hand, the radius with my left hand. Are we actually doing that? Probably not, but that's the theory. So I can grab in here and what I'm going to try to do is actually pull that ulna away from that humerus. So I wanna get in here with my fingers, my thumbs are gonna wrap around the backside and I want his arm just to rest on my shoulder so he's just nice and rested and comfortable. As I get in here, I'm gonna tuck my elbows in, I'm gonna pull him close, kinda like I'm tucking a football, so I can tuck in and then as I pull towards me, I just have to weight shift and I can do a, a distraction of that ulna and then gently release. So again, as I, the key components for this is finger placement, tuck those elbows in, and I'm gonna pull and scoop at the same time, and this is how I get my ulnar distraction that is good for all motions at the elbow.